Welcome to the Open to Hope Show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. These shows are brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, we, Heidi, we have some really talented guests today. Yep. And, and what I really love about it is that people who are artistic, one person is a singer, artistic, writing books. We've had so many fabulous people on showing us how our audience mm -hmm. can take the things that they've done and move them on in their grief by producing things and doing things yeah. and creating you know, things. Creating. And, yeah. yeah. And, and I like it because we've got a singer, songwriter, and then our other guest has, has made a lot of things and we're going to see them today. Pillows and scarves, et cetera. Oh, exciting. And written a book. So, um, yeah, so expressing your healing power. And I do love that because I think that we heal in different ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes talking is great. And you know, I'm a psychologist, so I do a lot of talking with people. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's hard to even give words and express what it means when someone that you love dies. Mm -hmm. And there's something about just showing people mm -hmm. um, or singing about it that is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we've interviewed a lot of people who had some kind of talents before they had the loss mm -hmm. and then they stopped doing it. And some people came up with new talents or came, brought things from their childhood. So hopefully when you watch the show today, you're going to get some ideas about how you can bring yourself forward through the arts. Yeah. So you want to introduce our guests? Sure, I'd love to. So we have two guests today, Patty DiMasselli and Denise Ganulin. And Denise has been on our show before. Um, Denise is a singer-songwriter, and she is going to, at the end of the show, sing Thank God for Memories. All right. Hi, Denise. Hi, Denise. Hi. So great to have you on the show today. And she does a lot in tribute to her daughter, Holland, who also went by the name Shelby. So she was Shelby and she was Holland, which I love. Um, <laughs> and then next to her, we have Patty DiMasselli. Hi, Patty. Hi. Hi, Patty. And she has written a fabulous book called Embrace the Angel. And I know that it's being put up right now, so you'll be able to see that. And she is an artist and an inspirational speaker. And she's brought a lot of fun things for us to see today. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. And Denise has brought a couple of her CDs yes. that we're going to take a look at, too. So very exciting to have you on because I don't feel like I have any of those fabulous talents, but it's great to have you on. So let's start with you, Patty, because okay. you've brought some things along with you for us. Well, first, you yes. need to tell us about Amber and yes. tell us about what you're doing and why you did it and what your inspiration's been. Well, I, uh, I gave birth to Amber um, mm -hmm. in 1976 and um, for some reason I thought that I was going to die before she was six. So mm -hmm. I recorded everything, our life together. That's amazing. I uh, documented everything and uh, in August of 79 I discovered a small lump behind her right ear. My first thought was cancer mm -hmm. and at that moment I heard it's not you that's going to die, it's Amber. Oh, wow. And so I spent about a, eight months or so going to eight different doctors in Connecticut and trying to convince them to biopsy. And mm -hmm. they kept saying, don't worry about it. You know, lots of kids get lots of lumps and bumps. Mm -hmm. And uh, she mm -hmm. fell, hit it on the fireplace, and it doubled in size. Wow. So I took her to Yale New Haven and they operated. Which is they a removed hospital. it. And um, it was rhabdomyosarcoma, cancer. Mm -hmm. And I gave her radiation to her skull and um, the surgery. They removed it. Mm -hmm. And when I went to uh, the prognosis meeting, they said, you know, we need to give her chemotherapy. And I said, there must be something else, you know. And they said, no, this is all there is. And I made a public plea. I went to the newspaper when Amber was discharged from Yale New Haven. And, begged the community, but this was before computers, uh, made a public plea if there's any other therapies around the world that could save her life. And the Associated Press picked up on it, so I started getting lots of information and documented again everything to mm -hmm. keep track. Um, we ended up taking her to Freeport, Bahamas. Dr. Lawrence oh. Burton, um, who was one of the originators of immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. And so because we were in the media, we had to sneak out of the country in order to get that therapy. Um, so then she got tonsillitis. Her immune system could not keep up, and it grew in size. But because we were, again, in the media, we couldn't find an American doctor to help us save her life. 
So Dr. Bernie Siegel, mm -hmm. uh, with just oh, yeah. an amazing man. Yes, we know him, and he's been on our shows before. He's yeah. fabulous. Love him, yeah. Yes. So Bernie said, "I will take her. I will treat her as my own child, and oh I will goodness. try to save her life." So wow. he assembled a team of surgeons um, in St. Raphael's, and um, it turned out that it had just gone too far. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we took her home to die, and Bernie helped us yeah. help Amber crossover so yeah. that's amazing it was it was an actually the moment that amber died she died at home mm -hmm. and i recorded it it's in the book mm -hmm. embrace the angel um at that moment when i said she was in a coma i said go be with god amber be with god she stopped breathing and i physically felt God in amber. Mm -hmm. wow. My body was just buzzing. That's amazing. So what I imagined her death to be and what it actually was, was completely opposite. Mm -hmm. So it was the miracle that I had prayed for, mm -hmm. to know God. And she was four or six? Four and a half. She was four and a half, okay. That half matters. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does. It does. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. it's amazing that you documented everything thinking yeah. that it was gonna be you that died. Yeah and that you have all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and what yes. an amazing, like they say, the good death. I mean, oh, there's, yeah. the, you know, you, you don't want anyone to die, but to see that peace and that love and that, that feeling of God is pretty incredible. Yeah, Amber said so many things, and I have a, a suitcase that's completely uh, filled with the last month of her life, oh, everything wow. that she said, I recorded. But um, I was telling Carolyn that she died on my 27th birthday. Denise? Oh, you were telling who? Carolyn. Denise. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it's an easy mistake. I know. <laughs> they're, they're so similar. Um, but one of the things that she said before she died, she said, Mom, when I die, I'll still be Amber. I'll just be different. Wow. And so she just changed. Yeah. I didn't lose a daughter. She didn't pass away. Mm -hmm. She's here now with us. Right. And uh -huh. It's an amazing experience. Yeah, that's great. Well, Denise, tell us a little bit about Shelby Holland. Yeah. <laughs> so my daughter was born in 1975, so uh -oh. close to yours. Uh, and I named her Shelby. That was her mm -hmm. name. And then the, in school, the kids would tease her, Shelby, come and round the mountains. So, so <laughs> She hated it. She'd come home crying. I said, when you turn 18, you can change it. So when she turned 18, she changed it to Holland. So I still refer to her as Holland when I talk about her right. out of respect, but it sort of sticks like, right, you know, that's, I still think of her as, as Shelby. That makes so, sense. Uh -huh. yeah. And so with Shelby, you were a singer-songwriter. You've been a singer-songwriter forever. I was never a singer-songwriter. Oh, not a singer. I was a songwriter. Mm -hmm. A songwriter. And I would hire other people to sing my songs mm -hmm. uh, and then try to pitch them that way because mm -hmm. I never really thought I could sing. And mm -hmm. my daughter always thought, you know, Mom, you got to go sing. You gotta, oh, I, I never that. would. So uh, after she died, I couldn't write for a long time. I yeah. actually quit writing. My mother died, then my daughter died. So. And how did your daughter die? Sepsis. Okay. She had some surgery, minor surgery, okay. not like a big deal surgery, and uh, she got a full body infection. And she, she was at home and got it, or was she in the hospital? No, she was in the hospital. Okay. She came home from the hospital, and it just didn't heal, so mm. uh, she basically collapsed on the floor, and three wow. days later, she was gone. And Came she was sepsis. 38 years old? 38. Wow. And you have grandkids. I children. have two fabulous little grandkids that hear stories ad nauseum. So, so she left two babies behind? Yep, they were one and two when she died. They don't oh, remember gosh. anything about her. Mm -hmm. I love that they're here. And uh, my granddaughter sings. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And she's yeah. seven, right? She's seven. Uh -huh. And my grandson's six. So, but you stopped writing. So I just stopped writing. I want writing. people to know about then, that. You, you had a talent and you stopped. I stopped. And then I was in the tank, as we all are. Mm -hmm. And my son in law said to me, You used to write. Why don't you start writing some songs for your grandkids and I'll play them? So I wrote a couple of kids' songs. That's how it started. And then wow. from that, I wanted to write about her. It mm -hmm. started to just like happen. And I started writing two years ago. I've written about over 20 songs. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. About, mostly about, about her mm -hmm. and grief. So. And you've got a couple. And now I'm singing. Yeah, and now I you're singing. It. Well, let, and you've got, uh, well, show us your CDs because you've got a couple of CDs. I just happen to have some. <laughs> <laughs> and they are <laughs> what, what a, party, a Party, which is the first one. And then I just did, did Unexpected Turn in the Road. And this is after she's died. Can you believe that you, no. you've gone on and it's done surreal. that? It's surreal. 
It's how like did surreal. you get yourself to do it? Because that's yeah. what people are going to want to know. How did you get yourself to do it? I, I was talking to someone who had a small grief group in San Diego. Mm -hmm. They were having a Christmas thing. And uh, I, I was getting some counseling. And he said, you know, what, did you, what do you love to do? I said, well, I used to love to write. He said, then you have to write a song. Write a song for this Christmas party. Wow, cool. So I wrote What a Party, which is <laughs> this one. And uh, I sat on it for a couple years. I didn't write anymore after that. And I thought, well, maybe I'll send it in to Compassionate Friends mm -hmm. last year to yeah. their conference. And Alan Peterson picked up the phone and said, you gotta come sing this song. This is really, it's a good song. And, and could you, you have anything else? <laughs> I was like, no. He said, could you write something else? So then I wrote Living on Memories. And mm. that was, I sang that there. And, and now I've just been writing and singing and it's like crazy. Right, and so. you're even thinking about writing out of the grief world, uh, things that aren't related to I am, yeah. I grief. wrote a song for siblings, which is not my, it was yeah. a great song. What Thank was the name you. of it? I'm Still Here? I'm Still Here. I'm Still Here and it was wow. sung at the National and Conference by the siblings. Yeah, and wow. now I've promised to write one for the Twinless Twins and I, I think it. after the show I just soft filmed, that I might do one for stillborns. Well, I've too. never do one for Open to Hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. <laughs> so uh, now tell us about, you brought some projects here, and I'm excited about that, Patty. Oh, I tell did. us about Amber and what this you've done, how this has taken you to do these creative mm -hmm. things. Well, I started a company, I'm a photographer and an uh, artist okay. as well, but I started a company named after my son, Tobias and Company, mm -hmm. and so we, I take photographs. Um, I notice the details like creatures. I, I do some from the Naval Academy, like mm -hmm. creatures of the Naval Academy and That's doors so cool. and windows and knockers, door knockers. And um, so then I make posters and prints and greeting cards and now silk items. Wow. Okay. So what I did is I was learning how to paint silk mm -hmm. and I was uh, facilitating a group for the bereaved parents of the USA, yes. first timers. We had Delane Johnson, the vice president, yes. on our show just recently. And so I thought, as I'm listening to the newly bereaved, and I, there, you miss the physicalness, you miss mm -hmm. the smell, the touch, the hearing. So I thought, what if I could make an embrace the angel scarf so that mothers could feel their loved one and mm. be inspired. So I took all the photographs. I started hand painting them, but I could not keep up. So I took all the photographs of angels that I'd taken from around the world and I put them on a scarf and then I put um, inspirational quotes on either end so that mothers could be inspired. Oh, I love that. And then there's a very secret but special message on the on the inside for every parent, oh. every mother. So we have What's cream. It? Can I see that? Uh huh. We have cream. What's, what's the special message, or is it? it are is, they different for each person? No, it, it is. It's sort of from amber, and we have ties for fathers. We have black and cream, and this is the best project mm. ever. We have an embrace the angel pillow. Mm -hmm. It's a pillow cover. We actually stuffed this one. But we've collected 99 angel drawings from angel artists all over the world. Wow, that and is so, so they've cool. put their angels on here. And so Tobias and Company, um, we call Embrace the Angel our giving back division of yeah, Tobias I, and I Company. Yeah, I love what it says right here. This scarf was created with love for you by Amber. Through her mother from God, feel the love of your angel touching your heart, healing your soul, and elevating your life here on earth. That is so beautiful. Mm, I love it. I love that. And um, so this is really neat. So we donate, Tobias and Company, we donate a scarf, tie, or pillow cover to a bereaved mother, father, or critically ill child oh, wow. for each one purchased. And um, so this is a real fun project. We have an, another pillow cover in production, actually, this great little girl named Grace. And if you go to embracetheangel.com, she is in the angel, uh, Angels in Action. And she is collecting, there's a picture of her and an audio of her talking about this project. It's 45 seconds and it's just beautiful. And so we're gonna call the next pillow cover Grace's Angels because at the end of that 45 seconds she says, I'm gonna collect 100 angels from all over the world to help sick children. So, wow. so we're doing several editions of the, the pillow covers. Um, and it's I just a this. wonderful way to elevate others, to it's share cool. Amber's message. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that, that is really, really, cool. really, yeah. really great. That is wonderful. Well, Love Denise, it. I am thinking that you should oh. tell us about um, Thank God for the Memories, and then we're going to listen to it. Okay. 
Uh, and you're going to sing it for us. I am going to sing it for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God for Memories is about uh, basically the memories of your child. Like really, you can have those all the time. And for me at the time I wrote it, I was what, three years in, it was the best part of my day when I could just sit by myself and think about her. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I could see her doing whatever I wanted, all the fun things that we did together. And that's sort of how that mm -hmm. song, uh, you know, came together for me. They're, they're all about her. There's something yeah. about, you have Amber with you, I'm sure, like every, every pillow you make, right? And every song I write, even if I end up writing for Sibs, mm -hmm. I feel like she's sitting right there, you yeah. know, helping. Uh, so it's a way to keep them, keep them close. Yeah. So awesome. It is awesome. Well, let's hear you sing. Right now we're going to hear Thank God for the Memories. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to have known you What a joy to feel your love If I had it for a thousand years It wouldn't be enough But I can close my eyes Any time And once again I'll have What was mine Thank God for me Heidi, that's really touching and amazing, isn't it? It is. It's really powerful, Mom. And it reminds me of something that people, I say to people, I say, you know, I'm poor for having lost Scott, but I'm much richer for having known him for 17 and a half years. Mm -hmm. Because we hold on to those memories and they become the fabric of our lives and it's so important. Yeah. I love, Denise, the fact that you just bring up, thank God for them. Yes. Because people are telling us, you know, oh, those memories, you know, it's too tough, I remember this or that. But the idea that you can bring out those sweet memories. And the positive, and the funny, and the fun. 
mm. and the playful memories. I've right? got to ask you something. Do you cry when you write those? Yes, I cry when uh. I sing them too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to sing about 20 times before you can decondition yourself. Yeah. How, do you, how do you write? I mean, do you wake up at night or, you know, do you write Sometimes during the day like four, or do you have a schedule? In, yeah, late, late in the night, like four o'clock in the morning, I'll uh. have a thought. And then it just sort of pops out. It, it usually it starts with a title and then mm -hmm. the chorus and like that. Mm. Okay. I, I, I feel like it sort of comes from somewhere else too. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, like let's, let's, let's talk about that coming from somewhere else because I know you feel that Amber's inspiring you, right? Oh, definitely. She, through my hands mm -hmm. and my heart, well, really from God, mm -hmm. through Amber and I feel as though I'm like a paintbrush here on That's earth. Mm -hmm. And the power of life mm -hmm. and the power of death, really, yeah. they're both incredibly powerful. Yeah. If you can harness that power and direct it in a positive direction here mm -hmm. on earth, um, you know, funny enough, as I was writing the book, I realized my mission and I had kind of denied it for most of my life. But when, but when I looked at my birth certificate, I was born in the Queen of Angels Hospital in, in wow. Los Angeles, the City of wow. Angels. Wow. And all these little all these things, angels yeah, signs. started coming together. And I, now I take this uh, mission with grace and with honor, and um, I'm really excited to, to be here on Earth and to have, you know, a little bit of time to elevate others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I love the, your music too, Denise, because it elevates other people too. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about the fact that you're not like, you know, some people are want to write this really dark, sad, sad stuff. But you're. Have you noticed that your music's changing over time now? Yeah, I think it, I think it is. Uh, but I, I like to write more about the love. Mm -hmm. You know, the good stuff. Like, I'm sorry she's gone. I would trade that for anything, anytime. Mm -hmm. But the fact is she is gone, and this is something that, you know, it has helped me too, but I, I get good feedback from other people. Like, they, they get what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. so I want to ask you if I have just had a loss, and I had a talent, like singing or whatever, how did you get yourself to do it? How did you, how did you kick yourself into it? What did you say to yourself that first time it, well it was uh, m more Alan it was like you're just you're gonna do it now, I'm not gonna <laughs> but play you the got song. in touch with him first I just sent it in I just sent yeah the but song what with got somebody you else's to, voice what got it. you to send it <laughs> <laughs> I just thought maybe they could use it and maybe it would help them or make them feel better that, so that's you sent what it I to thought. the compassionate friends yeah for their national convention yeah. like two months before everything was wow. already planned yeah talk about divine intervention and he said uh, we had somebody scheduled to sing or whatever, and that person just canceled. You're wow. coming. I said, uh, that was it. I don't well, sing. Well, yeah, talk about divine intervention. Mm -hmm. Somebody just canceled, and you're going to come. But how did you, what did you say to yourself when you were going to do it? I know, I think. I was a nervous wreck. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. really, I was, I was very. Understandable. Uh, yeah. I'm still nervous when I get up and sing. But what is but, it, but I think a lot of people, a lot of performers I've heard are, mm -hmm. that they get upset, yeah. you know, before they perform mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. But um, how do you, what do you say? Do you have some words that you say to yourself? No, I actually do ask for help from my daughter. It's okay. like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. let's, let's do this. And yeah, let's like do it help together. Me, yeah, help me, like, remember the words and, and sing it in a way that, you know. I that, love that, yeah. that, for her to call. And, and it you call seems to her. work. Yeah, so, yeah, it does beautifully. And you call Definitely. on your daughter? Oh, yes, absolutely. Because I know you do, do a lot of public speaking and a lot of getting out there. Yeah, I actually walk with my dog Annie in Quiet Waters Park, which is my church, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Amber has appeared to me. It's been the most amazing thing. I call it the wagging leaf miracle. And 99% of the time when I'm walking in the woods, I see this leaf. Oh, Even if there's no wind, just saying, hi, Mom, yeah, I'm here. That. It's just wagging. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful way to be reminded. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah. I want to, before we end the show, to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you and how to get your CDs and how mm -hmm. to look at your material. So where would they mm -hmm. find that? Um, well, you can go to embracetheangel.com mm -hmm. and uh, there's a free PDF book there. So it's free. My mes message is to spread uh, her word. So, um, and to buy us in company. We have, um, you know, different 
other silk items and, and prints and posters as well. So, yeah, and we also have Facebook, Embrace the Angel and Tobias and Company as well on Facebook and oh, Instagram. Great. Okay, Denise, how can we find you and get I some of your website, CDs? I have a website, deniseganulin.com, and I sell the CDs there, but they're also on CD Baby for downloads. Mm. So, and you can also go to like uh, YouTube, I think, and, and just listen for free. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and I'm sure both of you are available for events for people who are looking for some inspiration yeah. and, and some ideas, because you're both very inspiring. Oh, thank yeah, you. I agree. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yeah, you're am amazing. If you had one piece of advice for somebody who's trying to get going now that are watching you and finding themselves and are lost, what would it be? I think it's let go mm -hmm. and let God. Mm -hmm. Because so many times we try to cling to the physical, the physical person yeah. that is now dead. And um, just by letting the physical person go, I think you can open your heart to fill that void mm -hmm. um, with so much love and, and grace and goodness from the community. I like you know, that. We have a great community of people and uh, I think we all can share in, in, in that love. Mm -hmm. I, I like mm -hmm. that because there's a saying, let go or be dragged. <laughs> <laughs> and the reality is they're, yes. not, they're not physically coming back. Yes. So figuring out a new way to connect, which you both have and to keep them in our lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and for me, it's, it's she's still here. I can't see her or touch her, but I feel her. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a different kind of a, a relationship, but it's still a relationship. You don't, you don't lose yeah. it, you really don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how do your grandkids fit in? How do you connect them with Well, her? I have pictures everywhere, and mm -hmm. I tell them stories all the time. But, I love it, I love the uh, stories. But they, you know, they don't have recollection. But the best part is my granddaughter saying, what would my mommy say right now? I oh, love that I love question. That. That's my favorite question. So. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's cute. Really well, thank nice. you both for everything you do and for being on the show today. And you're an, both an inspiration. Thank you for having thank you. me. Thank you. are. Well, Heidi, I, again, I love that people find themselves and find their art. And I hope yeah. that people that are watching this will realize that they can really inspire other people as well as getting themselves going. And Heidi and I always want to remind everybody to let other people know about Open to Hope. And we want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours till you find your own. And God bless.